seeing pressures on rents uh, from, as far as when the, when somebody, somebody buys, they go in to renegotiate with the landlord. That's been a pretty big question. Um, are you, you know, what, what is the pressure that's being applied on the landlord as far as rents going forward? Yeah, everyone wants less. <laughs> you know, a lot of these guys have mortgage payments too. So, uh, you know, most landlords are willing to work something out either temporarily or short term to, to, to get a deal done. But uh, they aren't, uh, you know, just lowering rent arbitrary, you know, arbitrarily. They, they want to keep the rent up and they'll, they'll take a step back for a short period of time and then they want to get backwards going. We all, I mean, the people that are out buying are optimistic enough that we know that we're going to get through this at some point, whether it's a year from now or two years from now or three years from now. Um, we're going to get back to some sense of normalcy. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's terrific news. I think the next question is really uh, interesting from the perspective of you just mentioned the one restaurant that we put three quarters of a million dollars in, basically sold it for 10 cents on the dollar, um, which, you know, obviously, if you could open a restaurant for $75,000, it's already built out, maybe you have to put a little bit of dough into it, but not much. Um, what, what are valuations really looking like out there? So I've, I've got a restaurant, I put um, $2 million into it, and uh, it wasn't performing particularly well, and then this hit. Um, what, what are you seeing as far as valuations around those kind of businesses? Yeah, if you were performing well before COVID, there's not a lot of hope. I mean, someone might pick up the assets from you at a significantly discounted price, but uh, you know, it, it, the pricing, the valuations I see, the multiples are, are being reduced. So there are some, some businesses performing well on this environment and they're still, People will pay for it, and and they're still getting their dollars. But a lot of people, uh, the the COVID and the lack of sales or depressed sales is definitely driving valuations lower. So those brands you mentioned, some are doing well. What have you? Who have you seen that's doing really well? What what verticals? I, I've seen. Uh, we worked on a deal recently where it was six thousand square foot facility. And with 50% occupancy, he still had the space he could put 150 people in there. And uh, it's a drinking establishment and people are going out and drinking and playing pull tabs. And they were doing extraordinarily well and they got paid for it. I also see takeout uh, concepts doing, as you can imagine, as well as pizza. Pizza's doing real well. <laughs> That's not that's not a big uh, not a big surprise pizza and I think Mexican has also done very well uh, during this time. In fact, I had a, a call recently that uh, before before everything kind of started opening back up, the, the operator basically asked me the question: Do I have to open my restaurant when they when uh, we're allowed to? Uh, and of course, the answer is no. You can operate as a ghost kitchen as long as you like. And I think a lot of people have taken locations that weren't working. And they've converted them into ghost kitchens or they've added additional concepts. They've closed the dining room and they're using the dining room as additional staging space for third party delivery or takeout or delivery on their own. But the, the whole idea that was emerging before this, because we were oversaturated with restaurants, the, there was a move to, to begin to have more sales per square foot, which in some cases required you to kind of retool your business and add another concept in so you could kind of double your revenue or hopefully double your revenue, but at least pick up some additional revenue for the space. So these larger spaces, I imagine that, that we, we're seeing quite a bit of um, traffic in the larger spaces, right? So the, the, the bigger spaces that seem like an anchor before, um, Aren't, aren't, aren't such a bad thing now, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, exactly right. So, so those you know, 6,000, 7,000 square foot restaurants that were struggling uh, now are kind of sitting in the driver's seat. Yeah, they're going to the winter. They have the space. Right. 
Great. All right. So question is, is it better for me to keep my location open and list it for sale or close it? Well, if you close it, hopefully you can still sell it. I mean, it's a math problem. For each, each person's uh, situation is different, but if your landlord's not working with you on rent and you're forking out 10 or $12,000 a month, you know, can start adding up real quickly. So uh, you got, you got to do the math. I can tell you it's always, in my opinion, easier to sell something that's at least got some sales coming in the door and is operational. Um, and when your business is closed, they're really going to, the vultures are out. They're going to be out there really pushing being aggressive on pricing because they know you aren't operating and you have no sales and you're still responsible for the rent. So they, you know, they, they could salivate scenes like that and really be aggressive on, on going after you on a price point. Um, if you can keep it open and I, I would say it's best to do that, but in some instances it does not make sense to keep it open. So you just gotta do the math and see what works for you. Okay. 